the hell want to be buying used camera gear from strangers on the internet while this whole global pandemic is going on right now? Well, I'll tell you, apparently a lot of people because they've been buying from me. Like, aren't you afraid of not only receiving the item, but with some corona along with it? Overplay joke, I know, I'm just kidding. I tested negative. <coughs> oh, well, I hope I did it right. Buying used camera gear guide, COVID-19 edition. In this video, we're gonna talk about why buy used gear, how to do it, where to do it, how to properly inspect the used gear, and how to stay safe and avoid getting scammed. So why buy used gear? And listen, I get it, it's not everybody's cup of tea. I have friends who shudder at the fact of owning something that's been used before. But it's actually a great way to save a ton of money than to buy something that is brand new. Like me, for example. I'm a cheapskate, I'm a bargain hunter at heart, and I don't know if you noticed this, but I'm Asian, and Asians are always looking for a great deal. And if you're lucky, you could potentially end up with something that is barely used, practically brand new, at a really great price. But mainly, it's the easiest and the fastest way to accumulate a collection, especially if you're new or you're switching to a brand new camera systems. If you're getting started with your career in filmmaking or freelance videography, then you know you need much more than just a camera and a lens. You need a tripod, you need mics, you need lights. And buying all of these brand new would definitely rack up the bill. Fortunately, camera gear have multiple iterations of the same product, and you might be able to pick up a discontinued model that is just as good as the current model, but at a much better price. But what are some of the cons to buying used gear? Now, obviously when you buy used gear, there's not gonna be any sort of manufacturer's warranty. Those only come when you buy it brand new from an authorized retailer in your region. With that said, truth be told, there are only a handful of times I ever have to enact on my warranty. And for the most part, I don't remember a lot of them. The last recent memory that I have to send something to get fixed while under warranty is my MacBook Pro. The, the screen was flickering, but that's about it. And even then, things tend to break down after the warranty period, so... The worst that can happen is just you have to pay a little bit more for your repair bill. The second con is just more work on your end to make sure the item that you're buying is up to snuff, which means there's gonna be a lot more research on your end and some proper inspection to do in person. Don't worry, I'll show you how to do all of that in this video. Just think of all the money that you'll be saving by buying used gear. With that said, the number one rule when it comes to buying used gear is that if it sounds too good to be true, it probably is. So let's talk about where you can buy used camera gear. Number one, buy from reputable stores because chances are you can return it. Stores like Best Buy, B&H, Adorama, and Amazon Warehouse. Not only do they sell new camera gear, but they also have a used section as well. I personally myself had great customer service with these stores in the past. I never had to really return anything that I bought used from them. And your local camera store too. Just make sure you know their return policy. Number two is eBay. Everybody knows eBay. It's a peer-to-peer -peer transaction platform with eBay being the middle person or entity. What's cool about eBay is that the buyers and sellers have a feedback system. So the more positive feedback that you have, the more trustworthy you seem. But the main thing is that eBay has a buyer's protection program. So in the event that you receive a gear that is a dud or it's broken or damaged in any way, you're likely gonna get your money back. I do want to note that eBay is better as a buying platform than a selling platform. And I'll go over more in details in my seller's guide. Oh, another thing about eBay, you can actually get gray market items. These are not used, they're actually brand new products for a much lower price. The only caveat is that there is no warranty whatsoever. Usually these products are bought internationally because international pricing are a little bit different. I myself have bought the Zeiss 55 F1.8 off of gray market and have never had any issue with it, never had to send it in to get fixed. But yeah, treat it as if there's no warranty. I don't care if the store says there's a one year warranty with them, just treat it as no warranty. The third way of buying used gear is actually very common. You buy it locally from another person. You'll be using sites like Craigslist, Facebook Marketplace, or apps like OfferUp. These are also peer-to-peer -peer transaction like eBay, but unlike eBay, these are uncharted territories. It's unmonitored, unsupervised, no buyer's protection. You're literally meeting up with another human being doing the exchange. 
Again, I personally have had a lot of positive experience, not 100% positive, but for the most part, positive experience. So long as you practice the safety precautions, you will be fine. So how these sites work is that you punch in the product that you want to buy and likely a listing will show up. In this listing, there should be description of the product and a photo of the product. And if it's looking good and the price is somewhat what you want to pay for, you would message the seller. Now we're in the messaging stage, whether it's emails, text messages, or the in-app messaging system, make sure you get all of your questions answered about the product. Because when you meet up in person, all you want to be doing is just inspecting the product and making sure that everything checks out from the exchanges that you've had via the messages. And if you want the seller to be flexible on the pricing, make sure you do it before you meet up. Don't put anyone in an awkward position. In terms of meeting area, always, always, always meet in an open area with people. And some have told me that their local police stations actually encourage these types of Craigslist transaction to happen near the station. Goes without saying, but try to meet during the day. The light is not only for safety, but you can actually see what you're buying. If you do have to meet at night, just meet in a well-lit area. And try to bring a friend along. Not only can they be a witness, but someone that you can trust to hold stuff or be your money handler. And when it comes to buying used gear, make sure you bring all the tests that you need to properly test the gear, like a laptop, calibration tool, dust blower, etc. We're gonna get into how to do all of these tests in just a bit. And when you do test the gear out, make sure you test it thoroughly. Now in terms of payment, cash is always gonna be the best for the seller, but as a buyer, you can kind of go both ways. You can pay with cash or do it through a cash app like Venmo, PayPal, or QuickPay. As a buyer, there's less risk for you to pay with a cash app. It's more riskier for the seller to accept uh, payment with a cash app. But as long as they're cool with it, then it should be fine. Uh, sellers, I'll have more detail about that as to why you should always be accepting cash in the next video. Additional safety, COVID-19 edition. Wear a mask when you meet up with these people. For the most part, all the buyers that I meet up with have been very, very cooperative. They have masks, they have gloves, but I did have a couple individuals who did not come prepared. <laughs> so when I offer them my mask and my gloves, brand new, of course, they were very hesitant about it. And I was like, hey, I'm very sorry for making you do this, but it's kind of a crazy times right now. And they're like, whatever you believe, buddy. Look, I don't care if you don't believe in it, but just be respectful of others. I mean, when you walk into restaurants or stores, you have to put on a mask anyway. So we're doing this exchange right now. Just, you know, be respectful. Obviously bring a new pair of gloves. You'll be touching their gear. They'll be touching your money. It's just a lot of germs spreading around. Bring gloves. Sanitizers. Um, I would recommend having some sort of alcohol wipes uh, in the car. So once you get the gear after you buy, just wipe it down on the exterior. Don't ever use Clorox to clean your camera gear, okay? Just use the alcohol wipes to wipe down the camera gear, the lens or whatnot. Uh, avoid cleaning the sensor. I, I have to put this out there, okay? Because I know people would probably do it. Do not wipe the sensor with your alcohol wipe. Avoid touching anything that's electronic pins with an alcohol wipe. You need to thoroughly clean the camera, take it to a professional, your local camera store. All you, be, all you should be doing is just wiping down the exterior. Here. Oh, okay. If you're buying from someone outside of eBay, let's say from a photography forum or Reddit or something like that, and it's getting shipped to you, always, 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 always use PayPal and do a proper transaction. None of that friends and family bull crap. Pay the extra transaction fee if you must and have the seller attach a tracking number to your invoice. The friends and family transaction means you're willingly giving up that money to an individual that you trust. It's in its name. So if anything goes wrong, PayPal is not going to help you. But by doing a proper business transaction, the seller must follow through. Screen cap all the conversations that you have with this person, screen cap the descriptions and the photos that they send you. And likely PayPal will have more of a reason to side with you should the deal end up going south. Before we get into how to properly inspect the camera, I'd like to thank Squarespace for sponsoring a portion of this video. You guys already know Squarespace, all in one platform to create a website, but what's not often highlighted are the e-commerce tools. I personally use it to create my own little camera gear garage sale page to sell my used cameras and lenses. It was pretty smooth and easy to set up a clean product display page, set price and discounts, and it automatically keeps track of inventory when something is sold. 
It also integrates universal payment options like PayPal, Square, and Stripe, so buyers can purchase from your website securely. To learn more about using Squarespace as an e-commerce site for your small business, go to squarespace.com slash Jason Vong. You'll get 10% off using my link if you purchase your first website or domain, which would directly support this channel to make more helpful videos like this. Thanks for listening, guys. Now back to the video. Okay, let's go over how to properly inspect the camera now. Treat buying a used camera much like buying a used car. You want to thoroughly inspect it before you drive out of the lot. So the first thing that we're going to do is really check out the physical condition. Now I just want to say normal wear and tear on the camera is, well, normal. If you use, the, if you use something, there's going to be some minor scuffs and minor marks. These are completely normal so long as it doesn't affect the performance of the camera. What you're really looking for are obvious drop damage or potential water damage. Ask yourself, does the physical condition of the camera matches the price? Obviously, you don't want to be paying a like new price for a beat up camera. Next thing to do is to just check the LCD screen for any sort of scratches, dead pixels, look through the viewfinder, making sure everything is fine. The next thing you want to look at is the lens mount. Is there any sort of damage to it? Can you actually properly mount a lens to it? Is the connection pin actually working? Is it reading the aperture value of your lens? The next thing you want to check for are dead pixels. So don't be afraid to bring a laptop with you. Just meet at a coffee shop or Starbucks with Wi-Fi. And what you want to be doing is take these sample photos and blow it up on your computer to see for, to check for any sort of defects. When it comes to dead pixels, you want to shoot at ISO 1 to 200. And what you're really looking for is just a pitch black image. If you see any sort of dots, that's a likely a dead pixel. Of course, if you're shooting at a higher ISO, like 3200 or something like that, you're gonna see multiple dots. Those are not dead pixels. The next thing you wanna do is to check the sensor. Is it damaged in any way? Is it scratch? After that, mount your lens back on, jack up the aperture value to f16 and shoot into the bright blue sky. What you're looking for is dust. Now, minor dust is okay. It's again, normal, but if it's looking like there's bugs crawling through across your screen, then, uh, Honestly, that's something that the seller should have taken care of before selling that lens. In any event, try to blow dust it out with a blow duster, not your mouth. Next up, shutter count. This is where the Wi-Fi will come in handy because there are a lot of sites out there that are able to check the shutter count of the camera by uploading a sample image to it. I'll try to have as much resources as I can linked in the description box below, but just make sure you Google ahead of time and have that website ready. Shutter count is much like finding out the mileage of a car. It's just how many counts can your camera go up to before you have to replace it. The best thing you can do is to do research ahead of time, find out what the shutter count expectancy of a camera is. I think for the a7 III, it's like 250,000. So if it's if you ask for the shutter count, they tell you it's 10,000 is actually pretty low. But yeah, just remember you asked that in the beginning. It's a little bit harder when it comes to reputable stores to find that out ahead of time. That's where the test will come in. If, it, if it's way too high, you can always return it. But if you're buying it from another person, this is information that they should have before parting with their camera. And lastly, just kind of do an autofocus check. Bring a lens that you're familiar with and just try to autofocus out and see how responsive it is. Moving on to lenses, it's very similar to inspecting a used camera. You're gonna be looking at the physical condition of it. You're gonna be looking for obvious signs of scratches and dents. Again, cosmetic scuffs are a given, they're perfectly normal. What you're looking for is major scratches and major dents, any obvious fall damage. It's kind of subjective, but as long as the price to you matches the look of the lens, you should be okay. Next up, check out the glass on both ends and check for cracks. Take some sample photos and blow it up on your laptop. Same thing, what you wanna do is shoot at F16 into the bright blue sky and look for dust and spots. A little of them is okay, just probably needs to be clean. But if it's super dusty, again, that's something that the seller should have taken care of before selling. Next up is to check the autofocus, making sure it's responsive, but also listen for the autofocus motor noise. Now, sometimes some lenses, uh, it's normal to have a bit of noise when it's focusing, but if it's sounding like a lawnmower trying to start, well, duh, probably wanna avoid that and bring a comparison lens if possible, because sometimes you never know that dust you could be seeing is actually coming from your camera. Having that comparison lens will be super helpful. It doesn't have to be the same focal length as the one that you're buying, but enough for you to gauge how the lens that you're buying is performing. Now, when you're buying cameras, lenses, sound equipment, lighting equipment, or whatever, it's important for you to ask right in the beginning if the product comes with any of the original accessories. Now the box is not necessarily that important, but stuff like the battery and the charger, those are really important. 
Now, of course, certain cameras don't get shipped with a charger. It's gonna be up to you to do that research on your own, watch some unboxing videos, and note down any of the core functioning pieces that you might need, like a USB cable, the lens hood, or the bag. And finally, scams. How to avoid getting scammed. I'm gonna be completely honest with you, it doesn't happen all that often. I'm not saying it doesn't happen, it does happen, but it's very, very rare. People aren't as untrustworthy as you think they are. Most often than not, the sellers who are selling the items is because it doesn't fit their need or they're switching over to a different system or giving up on the hobby entirely. It doesn't hurt to ask them why they are selling the product. And if you're worried about them fooling you into buying a defective product, this is why we run all those tests. The seller should always oblige. Just always err on the side of caution. The best thing you can do is to try to vet your sellers. Uh, ask them things pertaining to the items that someone knowledgeable enough should know. Hey, does this lens work on my camera? Even though that's an answer you should know. What did you use this lens for? How come it didn't work out for you? Why are you selling this? The point is, it's just to gauge their responses and see if they're legitimate or not. If they're giving you some funky answers, and if you're buying from a professional, I don't think it's weird or awkward to ask for their website or their portfolio or at the very least sample images. Now, how do you make sure the item that you're buying isn't stolen? Honestly, it's really tough. I mean, you can search the serial number on websites to see if it's reported stolen, but that's honestly after the fact that you bought the camera. Um, and chances are the original owner might not have locked down the serial number anyways. It's, it's a very tricky, very scary territory. The best thing that you can honestly do is to, again, vet your sellers. Ask them those questions and if you start getting some funky answers, probably shouldn't be buying it. Gut feelings. If your gut tells you not to risk it, then don't risk it. Now there's a difference between being overly cautious and being safe. If you're constantly worried about getting scammed or being tricked or, or getting beat up, then you're probably not cut out to buy used gear. But if you see signs of red flags from your email exchanges or this person that you're meeting up with, then probably don't risk it. And this goes without saying, don't ever feel pressure into buying a used gear. Even if it sounds like the deal of the century, even if you drove 50 miles out to meet up with this person, if something doesn't check out and you're not 100% confident, just politely say no. Just politely say, hey, I'm sorry, this actually isn't for me. These are the reasons why. And if they get mad at you, that's on them. I've actually met up with someone who spent 30 minutes testing out a camera that I was trying to sell in 110 degree weather. He did all his thorough testing just for him to say at the end, I'm not gonna buy it. And hey, no hard feelings because during his whole thorough testing, he actually found a few defects that I personally have missed. I mean, they didn't affect the performance in any way, but enough for him to say, yeah, I'm not gonna buy it. And I'm totally cool with it. I think he ended up finding something else. The point is, don't feel pressure into buying something. Anyways, hope this video helped. And if you've had experience buying used gear, whether it's positive or negative, let me know in the comments down below. I think it's good for the community to sort of read both sides to then make a judgment call as to whether or not they should buy used gear or not. Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.